The Pioneer Football Show with head coach Jerry Odom. Complete coverage of Pioneer Football. 2020 hindsight with coaches and player interviews, along with the numbers behind the scoreboard. The Pioneer Football Show with Pioneer coach Jerry Odom. Now, Brian Staten. And we welcome you into the Pioneer Football Show with Jerry Odom as the Tusculum Pioneers this past Saturday go on the road to Rome, Georgia to take on the Shorter University Hawks. Win 61-14 to by scoring 54 unanswered. For the Pioneers, they are now 2-3 and all-time in the state of Georgia and 2-0 and all-time against the Shorter Hawks. We welcome in Coach Jerry Odom as this Pioneer football team. Um, I think they needed a feel good. You got a spark. You yeah. decided we're going to go start Tommy Pistoni and yeah. some guys got injured. We're going to have some question marks in the defense and we still had some question marks at the wide receiver court, yeah. but I think a lot of things came together Saturday. It, it was uh, last week of practice was very interesting because we were beat up a little bit defensively. I didn't know who was going to play. And uh, then obviously we just felt like we needed a spark. Nothing against Alex, he, you, know, you know, but we just felt like uh, you know, we tried to change that up, you know, and see if it gives a spark. I thought Tommy rose the occasion, played pretty well, and and uh, we ran the ball. We did the things we needed to do to be efficient on offense. Let's take a look at some of these highlights of Tusculum versus Shorter, and as you look at them, we're going to talk about the game. It's a Pioneer football team that maybe came out just a little bit flat on the first drive. Shorter seemed to be able to move the ball. As a matter of fact, scored a touchdown. So maybe... Flat is the right word, but also maybe shorter executed at a high level. They did. They made two really good throws, uh, you know, um, a back shoulder fade and a, and a regular fade. And then I called a bad defense on, on a run where our Mike linebacker needed to be a little bit wider, but it's something we hadn't done a lot of. So, uh, you know, I, I, maybe I came out flat. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know if you can do that, but uh, I, I, I take responsibility for that. We sat down, talked about what we needed to get done, and then we got kind of got going. Well, the very first highlight you saw was a, a, a penalty against yeah. us, and that was the, uh, the targeting. And, and I hate to say it, but I really believe as well it, it got things going and put us in motion. It was, yeah, it, you know, the, the funny part about that is, is, you know, if we run the blitz right, the, we blitz, we sack him and that never happens. But, uh, you know, it was a big hit. I, you obviously can't leave with your head. We don't want to hurt anybody in this game. But it was uh, something that kind of got everybody's juices flowing a little bit. And I thought we played very physical after that. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that we try to do. D. Alford made a great play on, on a screen. We knew they liked the RPOs into the boundary when they stacked. I called cover two, so let him be really aggressive. He's just got to be careful pointing at somebody. But then we come back and we get a great run out of Maxwell Joseph and great blocking there by Bailey Herring. And those guys just kind of push him in so we get a 17 yard. And now I felt like we were kind of off and running there. And uh, special teams played well, caused a fumble. Uh, you know, that was big. And I, I just felt like we. We just started playing our game after that. Maxwell ran for 109 yards, 14 carries, two touchdowns in two seasons now with five touchdowns over 250 yards. A.J. Bellinger we just see from Tommy Pistone who threw for 222 yards and three touchdowns. That was his first touchdown. A.J. Bellinger's first touchdown. That should have been his should second Should have been touch. his second one. That was a great one-handed yeah. catch that he actually got his foot in, and they didn't give it to him, so we had to get another freshman involved, Jake Moss, on the very next play. And Tommy does a great job standing in there. They brought six. We only had five to protect. He knew that guy was going to be free. He got the ball out of his hands. Jake makes a good catch, and we get another touchdown. A Pioneer football team that defensively limited shorter to 252 yards and just 62 yards on the ground, and then that – passing yards for shorter they got 50 yards on one play and 67 yards on the very first drive so you could say that they kind of were locked in mike klein the defensive coordinator said we wanted four turnovers on the day special teams for the second straight week gets a turnover yeah they're playing well you know especially that kickoff unit you know our punt unit did a lot better we shored up some things there i was happy with the uh, our punt punt team and then you know i felt like our uh, punt return team had two nice returns uh we did a lot of good things we kicked the ball well i thought our kickoffs were you know placed great uh defada gets sack player of the week uh for special teams you know with eight extra points and a field goal so hopefully we're getting better in those things we certainly work hard enough at it uh, pioneer team where tommy pistonius just kind of go back to him just early in the game it just seemed like you know it's my 
It's his first start. Maybe he's just not settled in. He missed a lot of high throws. Well, I think, you know, first game in two years, you know, and, and, and I think, he, you know, sometimes you're a little like amped up, pumped up, whatever. And I think he did miss some throws high. But then I think he settled down as the game went on. Us being able to run the ball, give the offensive line some credit. I thought they, sure. they played pretty well. Uh, I thought they protected well for the most part. They, you know, we were able to run uh, what we wanted to run and be efficient. You, you know, we didn't bust a lot of like 60 and 70 yard runs, but we got a lot of four and six and five and five and four. And when you can do that and stay ahead of the chains, then it allows your offense to kind of do, dictate what they want to do. Well, it's a 12 of 25 for Tommy, 222 yards. Weasmore, two of three. Alex Ogle, three of six. So when you talk about the completion, 17 completions in the, in the game, to 11 different receivers yeah. and you spread the wealth. What did you see from some of your young guys? Well, I, I, you know, every freshman, every true freshman we had had a catch. That's huge. And I think those guys are, I, I've said this to you before, I don't think the moment's too big for them. Right. And I'm excited about that. Uh, then, you know, Bri Burnett again is playing solid. Chavis had a couple nice catches. Deshaun had a catch or two. You know, uh, Torrey Ponder had two good catches. So being able to spread the wealth and rotate those guys in because we trust all of them is going to keep those guys fresh and playing fast because I didn't think we played fast the week before. And I think we didn't get enough of those guys in and being able to rotate them in. So we kind of had a structure on how we used to do it back in the day at JU, how, kind of how, how we roll guys in, and I think that really helped. Hey, Pioneer football team offensively, they got, took flight, obviously, with 61 points. You can talk about all the, the, the amount of points, 10th most in uh, school history and scoring. But for Coach Jerry Odom, the most that he has had in the tenure here at Tuscaloosa. And then defensively, you turn that around on the flip side, uh, a team that, again, limited to just 14 points in the shorter University Hawks. Uh, Isaiah Dunn, who was, you know, ejected for the targeting, and then the first guy off the bench is Jay Boyd. Uh. And we've talked about, you know, maybe just a freak of nature. Uh, had surgery this past week, and then Saturday he's out there playing. Uh, the guy's a gamer. Well, actually, he didn't have to have surgery. Oh, he didn't have to have it. Right, okay, right. but we thought he was going to have to have surgery. And, and you know, I, I told him before the game, hey, I'm not sure how much we're going to play. We're going to try to make sure you get well. And he was fine with that. Jay understood. We got SAC conference coming up and everything else. Then Zay goes down with the targeting, gets ejected, and we don't really have, you know, when you're traveling on the road, you might be two, maybe three deep in some spots. Yeah. And Jay's like, Coach, I can go, just put me in. So I'm like, okay. So, you know, here we go. And that's kind of what we did, and he played well. D. Alford, who we'll talk with a little bit later, it just seems like there are a couple of guys, Josh Forrest and D. Alford. I just want to point them out uh, because I got your scouting report and then the guy, two guys that kind of followed that scouting report the best. Now, there were other guys out there, sure. obviously. But D. knew when to blitz. And it's only obvious to me from the booth because he was on my side. D. knows when to blitz, where the tight end was lined up, did that. Malik Goodman comes over on a third down and one yep. and makes a big play because those two are communicating. Josh Forrest seemed to be unblocked on that on that defensive line. Those are two guys that really played at a high level. Yeah, I, you know, we, when you go back and look at it, I thought uh, a lot of guys played well uh, defensively once we got going. I really, but, but you're right, Josh and D uh, played extremely well after that first drive. I thought both of them, play, you know, played hard, played well, but really the whole D-line as a whole was in their backfield the whole time. They're not not—they're young in the offensive right. line, and we knew that we had an advantage there. And we and with our games and stunts and movements and some of the blitzes that we do, we thought we, they would have trouble, and, and they did. You know, and then you got Ahmad Gandy, who got his first start, gets a extra point field goal block, uh, or a field goal block, and then we run it all the way back, and then we do another dumb thing and get another penalty. So we just got to be – I love the effort. Our effort on special teams is really getting good, yeah. and that's effort on special teams is huge. You know, I mean, guys not taking a play off. That's huge. They're going for a field goal. Those guys don't take a play off. We get the block, and it turns into possibly seven points, and the offense ended up cashing it in for us and saving our bacon there yeah. a, a little bit. But, I, you know, I think it's a situation where we've just got to understand when you make a big play, score, celebrate with your teammates, don't do never block behind the ball. I mean, the, these are things we talk about, but obviously now when you see them on film, it's a little easier to handle. It was a tough block in the back penalty three yards into the end. It was. I promise you it was a tough one. It was. It, it, it should have been a score or maybe a penalty. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe. 
Special teams you've already talked about. I thought Glick did great on kickoff. Of yep. course, he kicked from the 50 most of the time, but seven touchbacks in the game is pretty impressive. Defada was the AstroTurf South Atlanta Conference Special Teams Player of the Week with his eight extra points and one field goal for 11 points in the game last year. You may recall Isaac Gallegos had four field goals in the game, so it gets shorter. The special teams, the kicker's doing well, and Cantrell even came on and punted away twice, yep. averaged 47 yards per punt on the day and forced a turnover plus big returns in the punt game and the kickoff game for both Jay Boyd and D. Alford. Yep. You could say almost the complete game, but I think this is something that you guys definitely needed. Mm -hmm. I thought you felt like you came out of the gun a little bit slow in game number one, so game two you came out firing. Yeah, we didn't play well. I mean, you know, nor take nothing away from North Greenville. They, they won, but we that's not the team we, we're going to be. Now, you know, I don't think Shore is a great football team yet. They're awful young. They got a lot of young kids and everything else. So we understand we did what we should have done. You know, that's what I told the kids. I said, great win. Enjoy it. We did what we should have done. But now we're on the limestone because we're getting in the sack and they're all going to be better. So we've got to be better every week, too. We can't, hey, we, you know, we had a big win and then go backwards. So I think it's a huge point for us to move forward and try to build off this win, build off the momentum, but understand who you played and what you're getting ready to play. Conference opener this Saturday. We'll chat with Pioneer coach Jerry Odom about the Limestone Saints when we return right after this. The, the Pioneer football show with Jerry Odom continues. We are in Grange County, Tennessee. Pierce Farms and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingles for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingles is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. And we welcome you back here to the Pioneer Football Show with Jerry Odom. Tusculum versus Limestone this week. Two teams, Tusculum and Limestone, who were in the state of Georgia this past Saturday. And just down the road as Limestone was taking on West Georgia, one of the top teams in the country from Carrollton. It's yeah. a different, it's not a different team. They've got a lot of great personnel that comes mm -hmm. back, but it's a different year. Maybe that's a good thing. Craziest game that I think I've been a part of last year with Limestone. Yeah, we, you know, when you turn somebody over six times and score twice, you usually win. Uh, on defense, we just didn't play very well on offense. So uh, you know, it'll be a challenge. I mean, they're they got a new coach. You know, Coach Fury's up there in Chicago. Uh, you know, coaching the wide receivers. So they they got a new football coach. He used to be the D line coach over Carson Newman. So I think they're going to be they're four three with a little bit of fifty on defense. They blitz a lot. They'll cover zero. You know, cover one. They bring the house. Uh, so we'll have to be really good on our blitz concept stuff. Uh, de you know, uh, on their offensive side, the quarterback coach, he was there last year, but now they're OC. Uh, the quarterback left, the real athletic kid yeah. that they had quarterback left. I don't know where he went, but they have a 6'7", 240 kid that was a Marshall transfer, a uh, big arm, name's Phillips, uh, you know, good player. Uh, doesn't run near as well as what we saw last year, but probably a much stronger arm. Um, you know, they're they're – they got a great back, you know, he 23 is a heck of a football player. Um, and he'll, and the thing is like, they'll run the inside zone and that thing may hit anywhere. It may hit all the way backside, it may hit front side. So we gotta be great on our run fits there. Uh, they do some some neat little things where they'll go Emory and Henry or they'll they'll trade three guys and all that. We just got to work on that. That shouldn't affect us. We don't flip our front anyway. Um, but, but those are things that they'll do. Uh, my dad, who's a coach, used to say, hey, Jerry, that's like putting makeup on. You know, you're just yeah. trying to hide your deficiencies and stuff like that. So uh, we want to make sure that that uh, we get lined up correctly, play fast, and then we're fine. And then I think we'll be fine. Um, they're solid up front. 
uh, like I said, they got a good tight end, yeah. more 11 personnel, which is one tight end, three wide receivers. Uh, they did lose all their wide receivers from last year, but the three they got are, all look like they're pretty good route runners and stuff like that, uh, breaking down film today. And I think that they're a team that's going to come in here hungry. Obviously, they played two pretty good football teams, Gardner-Webb, and then they play, you know, West Georgia. So they start off with two toughies. Uh, hopefully, we can make it tough on them too, but we'll have to play extremely well here at home because we didn't play well last time we were home. And I, I really want to, I mean, that's going to kind of be an emphasis uh, for us to, you know, start, we got to start protecting our house better. And we talked to our kids about that and they understand and we just got to go out there and play our best. And uh, every game counts now. This is for the, the every game for the, for the, the title, the trophy, whatever you want to say. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Limestone Saints kick off the South Atlantic Conference season from Pioneer Field at the Nicewanger Sports Complex Saturday. Kickoff will be at 6 o'clock. Join us on the Pioneer Sports Network. Coverage begins at 5 o'clock. That's on WSMG 95.5 FM, also AM 1450, and around the world right here at TusculumPioneers.com on their YouTube channel. Many thanks, as always, to Dom Donnelly and Jim Miller and Nick Forsberg and this guy. He's Jerry Odom. We're back next Saturday. And until then, Brian Staten, go Pioneers. The Pioneer Football Show with head coach Jerry Odom. Complete coverage of Pioneer Football. 2020 hindsight with coaches and player interviews, along with the numbers behind the scoreboard. The Pioneer Football Show with Jerry Odom. A presentation of Tusculum University Athletics.